news has hit the skateboarding community. As a lot of you guys should know or already know, Nigel and Dominic Walker both have left Element. And a lot of people are saying that it's bad management. But is it really bad management or is it something more? And this is going to be a lot of speculation. I'm going to be giving you guys what I think about this, what I think Element is actually doing. Because there are two perspectives to anything. You got the skater's perspective and the financial perspective. I've seen a lot of different people and what they're thinking about it. But I'm going to tell you guys what I think. And if you guys agree or disagree, this is all speculation. So if you guys disagree, just leave it in the comments below. If you guys agree, tell me why. I'm going to use the Nine Club experience as a reference point. When Nigel first came out was Nigel 2, Freeze, whatever. And he came on an experience to talk about it. He also mentioned a little bit about what he was doing with um, Ty Evans, which was a documentary about himself and how he was raised and all that. Now, some people might say, oh, that's cool. He's doing a documentary, whatever. But if you're a brand and you're trying to promote your product through his name, that's where Nigel would come in and he would have blown up Element. He would have made so much money. So it doesn't make sense for Element to throw off a skater that was just about to come out with a documentary so it wasn't worth getting rid of the main person that was on their brand. So that was just like a little bit of a backstory of what was going to happen in the future. This is going to lead me into explaining why. Now the question is why are all the kids going to Primitive? Why are all the kids going to April? Why are all the kids going to Revive? They really love the characters behind that brand so basically their team always put that glue together for the boards to have so many sales even for revive you see them on youtube you see what they are behind the cameras that you can see everything that's going on with them and that's what kids love nowadays they love having a reference point of a good character someone they always watch their whole life and try to skate just like them have as much fun as them if you look at Element, Element has not done any of that. And I guarantee you that Revive has more sales than Element. Element in the skateboarding community isn't that popular. The only reason why Element is still getting sales is simply because Nigel's on the team. That is the only reason why they're getting sales. As long as Nigel's winning the competitions, the SLS, the streets, whatever, they're going to keep getting sales. But that's not a real company to be backed by. If you look at all the other brands, they have a whole team that supports each other. The company supports them. And they're the ones that are making the most money because they have their name out there and they have a good character behind it. Element, not just the only person that's there that's actually putting their name out, that's winning competitions. Obviously, there was Cookie Dough who was obviously making a brand, a name for himself, and helping out the brand, but it wasn't at that level where Element wants it at. If Nigel is the only person that holds the bridge up, eventually that bridge is going to collapse. If it's whether an earthquake or a typhoon or whatever, so that bridge is going to collapse. Does it really make sense to kick off their only team rider on Element if they're the only, if they're the only ones that are holding the bridge? Who only watch SLS, who don't really skate, or are in the real community. All they see is he got gold medals, he's a cool skater, he loves winning, whatever. And that's basically someone who's not in the community, but people who are in the community, they call him a sellout, they don't like his reputation, they don't like his attitude, they don't like anything about him. That, com that part of that community has already seen their perspective on him and how they look at him, and they're not really gonna buy his boards. They might buy Element, they're probably not gonna buy Element with Nigel's name on it because they already have their point of view on him. The old school skaters are probably not going to buy him. The new school skaters are already on their way to Revive, Primitive, April. The only reason why Nigel keeps selling boards is because he keeps winning competitions like SLS, X Games, and all the other competitions that are uh, posted by whoever it is. The problem with that is as age comes in, you're not going to have the same strength. You're not going to be able to do the same things as you were able to do 10 years ago. So it's not like it's going to be forever. So what would happen if Nigel stops winning games, the reputation in the community is not as good. Nobody's, um, everybody starts forgetting who he is. And so what's going to happen is the board sales are going to start going down. So Element becomes a one leg and they won't be able to sell as many boards. As and the company will go under bankruptcy either way. 
because Element is a core brand, they look down on YouTube skaters, they look down on skaters that aren't part of their community, their, their little world. So they have their own reputation, they have their own core ideologies, but in essence, in the long term, now that it has come down to it, Element isn't on that level anymore. So let's look at Element from a perspective of the skater and a perspective of a financial planner. So let's talk about Element from a perspective of a skater. So a skater looks at a reputation of a company. Do they support the skaters? Do they support uh, the locals? Do they support whatever they're supporting? If the team manager isn't coming out to the skate sessions to support the team, to give them motivation or whatever they're doing, then it's not really, they're not really supporting the skaters. They're just giving money to just go skate, but it's not like they're going out. They don't have that connection with team management like they're supposed to. The company doesn't put priority on the team. The company only thinks about the money that they're putting in and taking out. They're not, they're not really putting in that time to help the skaters out with whatever they're going through or whatever uh, injuries they're going through. They're just telling, hey, here, go do some therapy, come back in a week or two weeks and then go back to skating or go home and do whatever and we're not going to be paying you for that whole week or two. As a skater, if you're on that team and you hear something like that, it, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth and you do, you do not want to be on a team like that that doesn't really care about you. If Element doesn't have any of the team riders that they have now, it just becomes another brand in the skateboarding community. And if you, let's say, they have the team on, it's still just another brand. It doesn't change the fact of what Element is. Everybody knows what Element is. They know all the team riders or were on the team. And it's not a brand that everyone wants to support. It's just, just another brand on the street or a local company that they just know and they're not buying anything just they're just going somewhere else they'd rather buy a company that they support that has a cost behind it than someone that or a company that doesn't have anything behind it just people on a team that's the perspective of a skater or if i'm looking at it that's my perspective on it um if you guys agree just put it in the comments below if you disagree then put it in the comments below but now let's talk about how or why would financially they want to kick off skaters off their team the way a brand makes or a way a brand like this makes money is by sales. If sales are the basic income of a company, if we look at the past two to three years, is the company making money off the boards? Are the sales going up? Is the company making money off the sales? Or are the sales going in a standstill that they're not selling, that they're not making any money, they're losing money, um, whatever the reason is. So that's a main factor in financials that you have to understand. If the boards aren't selling, if the board sales aren't reaching a point where the company wants or the, or the executive boards want the boards to be at, because they're not getting the sales that they want, they're going to have to change things up. A company like this doesn't have one, two, three people behind it. They have a whole team behind it. And each of them steps by steps to financially make themselves stable in that company. The major part of keeping a skater on a brand is simply the contract. So if you have a five year contract, then you have to stay on that company for five years. You have to keep getting paid for those five years. And some people might have already ran out with the contract and they don't want to stay, or maybe they want to go to a different company. So they're basically on the team because they have to, because they have a contract. They don't want to get sued when leaving off that team. But also the contract between a skater and a company has to be sufficient for both. So if the skater wants to get paid more, then the company has to pay them more. If the company wants the skater to do something, then the, the skater has to do something. It's part of their contract. If if the board sales and the skater's pay aren't matched up, so let's say the board sales aren't at that point where the skater gets the paycheck. Obviously, they have royal payments where if you sell uh, one board, you get a dollar. But if you don't sell 100 boards, you're basically not going to get make, make a regular income. So most skaters, what they ask for is a weekly, and then they also ask for royalty. So if the board sales aren't going up, or they're at a standstill, they don't want to keep a skater on there if the board sales aren't at that point. If a brand is too big for them to keep a skater, and their skater only makes about 10% or 20% of the sales, they're not going to keep them because... Why am I going to wait two to three years for my sales to go up or stay on a stale, stalemate when I could just kick you off and make more money in my pocket from the company for the sales that I already have, Element's already doing without your name on it, and I'll just keep whatever money I have that I was giving you. Again, this is all not 
This is all speculation. I'm just telling you guys what I think, what I would do. The thing is with Element, they also have different departments. So it's not like they only focus on skateboarding. They also focus on fashion. So they have book bags, they have clothing, they have jackets, they have uh, boards, tools, whatever. They basically have the full set for a whole board from Element just alone. They don't need to work with other brands to create a skateboard. And that's where they might be going to. They might be trying to revolutionize their company by just trying to focus on one, not one department, but on their own brand and not having to go to other distributors. Just like how Louis Vuitton doesn't go to other companies or other distributors. They just keep their brand in one location. Just like a skate shop board has only their brand. They don't give their brand to other skate shops because increasing the competition. So they just want to focus on their own brand. So the solution for Element is very simple. Take the money and run. There's no point in holding on to a company that's already dying. You might as well just take the money and change it to something else or start something else or make a different plan or whatever you're going to be doing. There's no point in putting money into a sinking ship. It's already sinking. So this brand is already sinking. You just got to take the money and go. That's it. It's not there's no complications about that. But there's another solution that Element could also do, which is transforming their brand into something else. Earlier they were a core brand, now they could change into something better, something bigger, something, I don't know, whatever they plan, because they are they have a whole team behind it. They definitely have something planned for that. If you, as, Like I was saying at the beginning, Revive was definitely making more board sales than Element. But Revive, they have the youth skateboarding community, which is a whole bunch of kids just buying their boards, skating them, destroying them, whatever, and they're buying more and more and more and more just because of the people behind it, the names behind it. But I think this is the year where there's going to be a real pivot in skateboarding. What I mean by that, there's going to be a huge change in skateboarding. I think that skateboarding is going to start leaving the core brand and there's not going to be any more core brand. And I think there's only going to be YouTube skating and the teams that put out the YouTube videos on there so you can have Santa Cruz but Santa Cruz is also putting out videos on YouTube you have primitive that's putting out videos on uh, their primitive channel so that's what I think is gonna be the big pivotal moment and if element has not been doing that element has not been in that community like the other brands and that's why their sales are going down so the only solution they have they have to transform they have to change into something better that the community wants that the brands want and they don't need that much money to do that they could just start with a camera or do days in the life of a regular skater just like most brands are doing like Santa Cruz and all that so that's basically what I think about it if you guys agree or disagree leave it in the comments below and I'll read through it and see what you guys think about it